in this part we'll talk about the first group of kingdom fungi that is zygomycetes we have talked about the zygomycetes when we were talking about the brief classification zygomycetes is a group which is also known as conjugation fungi and the reason why they are called conjugation fungi is during sexual reproduction the two hyphae are going to conjugate they are known as zygomycetes because after conjugation there is a zygote like structure also formed in case of zygomycetes there is no motile cell that means no cell is going to have any cilia or flagella for locomotion the hyphae are aseptic and because of this condition they look multinucleate which is known as cenocytic cenocytic is multinucleate and they appear multinucleate because those septa are missing or absent in this group we'll talk about the example which is the most common and that is known as rhizopus and one species of rhizopus which is called rhizopus stolonifer which is the most common one and it is known as bread mold it grows on bread and that's why it is called bread mold but there is one more important thing about it it is used for commercial production of for commercial production of fumaric acid and it is also used in few steps in of production of cortisol cortisol so here also it is used but this is for only few steps and here it is used for of the complete production of fumaric acid so this is the commercial use of rhizopus now let us see the vegetative or the somatic structure the vegetative structure of rhizopus when it is not reproducing at that time there are only two types of hyphae are, which are seen the ones which run on the substratum and these hyphae are known as stoloniferous hyphae and arising from these stoloniferous hypha are few hyphae which go or grow on the lower side and these are known as the rhizoidal hyphae because they are going to act like the roots for absorbing rhizoidal hyphae these rhizoidal hyphae they secrete a substance that is called diastatic substance and this digests the food basically it converts the insoluble carbohydrate into soluble carbohydrate and then this digested food is absorbed by these rhizoidal hyphae so this is the structure which is seen during the non reproductive season now when rhizopus reproduces asexually so during asexual reproduction which takes place by spore formation now how are these spores formed and where are these spore formed so let us draw this stoloniferous hypha these are the ones which are seen on the substratum now during reproductive season a vertical growth is seen we will draw the structure which is inside also we would find many nuclei no septa so it appears as multinucleated there are few rhizoidal ones which are seen here and 
Now during reproductive season, there is an outgrowth or a vertical growth which is going to take place. So cytoplasm with the nuclei is also going to migrate into this. When the structure grows, it is going to appear like this. It becomes a vertical structure. Here are all these nuclei and these nuclei are here also and the tip becomes swollen. So the cytoplasm and the nuclei, they migrate to the tip also. This vertical structure is known as sporangiophore. And this structure is going to give rise to the sporangium. Now what happens in the sporangium is, if we see only this upper part, we find that the nuclei, they migrate towards the periphery and here there is cytoplasm also with the nuclei. This is the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is in the center also. Let me make the nuclei a little bigger. And now we start giving these cytoplasmic areas names. The outer cytoplasm which is going to give rise to the spores is known as sporoplasm and the inner one which will form a structure called columella we call it columellaplasm what happens in this columella is vacuoles are going to appear so in the next stage what is going to be visible to us is there are vacuoles which are formed in the central cytoplasmic area and this is that area which is known as the columella. So this is the columella and now the nuclei are going to divide. So there would be many many nuclei which would be found in the peripheral cytoplasm. Many nuclei would get surrounded by little cytoplasm and a membrane would be secreted around it. So now these multinucleated spores are formed. Let me change the color of this. So this uh, in the outer part we would be seeing certain membranous structures and these structures may have one, two or many nuclei. Now after this, this sporangiophore, sorry, this sporangium is going to rupture. When it ruptures, all these spores, they are released. And each spore has one, two or many nuclei. This spore is going to germinate. Suppose this spore germinates. And what will happen is the hypha is produced. Here there were initially say three nuclei, these nuclei will divide and this hypha will grow and this is how we get the vegetative structure or hyphae of the body. That means again the vegetative part is formed. Here there is no gamete formation, that is why this is asexual reproduction. But in case of zygomycetes, sexual reproduction is also seen. So now in the next part, we'll talk about sexual reproduction and rights of